welcome to a different corner of my studio. This is actually where I paint when I'm painting for myself and not doing demos. But what I want to do today is walk you through the steps I take when I'm selecting the pastels that I'm going to use for a painting. I've gotten a lot of questions about choosing pastels for a painting. Um, for example, how do you pick the colors? I don't see the colors that you see in your reference photos. Uh, I want to be a little bit more playful with color. How do you do that? How do you go about deciding what pastels are going to go into a painting? So just to start from the beginning, I like to pick a limited palette of pastels before I start a painting. Uh, and that is so that I can have more harmonious color, not have color chaos because I'm not choosing from too many pastels. In fact, I tend to reuse pastels in that palette rather than pick yet a new pastel uh, out of the box. So it really helps keep me uh, having better control over my color. Um, so one thing that I do is I look at my reference photo and I pick the pastels out of my big studio box and put them in a sep <coughs> excuse me put them in a separate tray uh, and what I want to do <coughs> excuse me is walk you through the steps that I take another question one of the question other questions that I get is when you're choosing your pastels for a painting do you think about the color scheme that you're going to use and when I say color scheme I'm talking about complementary triadic analogous right the color the color um, recipes I like to call them and the answer is no I actually don't think about a color scheme when or before I'm choosing my my palette unless that I'm doing an exercise where I'm challenging myself in other words I might say oh today I want to do a, a tetradic color scheme and then I would you know that would be a, a personal challenge but other than that I just pick pastels that I think will work for the painting and for the mood that I'm trying to create. And I trust my instincts, I trust my sense of color that I'm going to pick colors that work together. And because I separate them from my big box and put them in a smaller tray, I can actually analyze how those colors look together before I even start the painting. All right, so, uh, however, and this is the color wheel that I like to use and we're gonna be talking about this this month. Um, this is the analogous color wheel. Sometimes I use a color wheel to fix a painting or to correct a painting. Like if a painting is not working and I think it's a color problem, I can take out the analogous color wheel and look at it and say, okay, what what could I use to make this painting better? Or what should I could I take away to make this painting better? And we'll talk more about this. But, but today I want to walk you through the steps of selecting pastels for a painting. So let's start off first. This is the reference photo that I'm going to use. Can you see this? And I also will put a copy of this in the description, you know, of this video so that you'll be able to see it. I'm not going to do a demonstration for this painting. I'm only going to select the pastels. This is just, this is so I can really slow down and show you how I do this. So we've got a uh, mountain scene with some sheep and it's a beautiful blue sky day and, and bright sunny grass. All right, that's what I'm working for from. Now direct your attention down here and I've got my butcher tray. It's just a butcher tray that I line with a washcloth so that the pastels don't roll around and they stay a little bit cleaner. Um, <clears throat> this is sold for watercolor paint mixing. And you can get it online at most online um, art stores. I think I get it at Blick. Um, <clears throat> I'll see if I can remember to put a link. This is my studio box. So do, <laughs> do as I say and not as I do. It's a mess. And I haven't spent any time cleaning it up. But basically it's arranged by... Uh, loosely arranged by color family with the darks up here and gradually going towards the light values and this uh, last row are neutral kind of grayed colors. It's very messy obviously it's, it needs attention um, but yeah don't do this. I, I'm, sh I'm sharing a post this month about how to organize your box and that's got that's got better advice. <clears throat> but anyways, it works for me because I, I pretty much know where my, my different colors are. So how do I go about 
uh, choosing the colors. Well, I look at my reference photo, and I'll just put it like this. Don't worry about looking at the reference photo. I'm going to put a copy um, in the description. The very first thing that I do is I say to myself, okay, you need some dark values because you need to build from dark to light with pastel. You, you have some dirt and you have some dark areas under the grass, so you need to start as dark and rich as you possibly can because you know you can always lighten it, you can always change it. So the very first thing I do is I, I choose a selection of dark value pastels that are similar in value. So they have to be very close in value. Um, and I keep a uh, dish towel handy because uh, I, these pastels are dirty, so I like to clean them as I go, and that helps, that, that helps me keep them clean. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select a dark blue. So now when I clean this one, I realize that that's kind of a grayish black, but it's... I'll put it there. I might want to use that. So I need to find a dark blue value pastel. So I'll clean this one off. Make sure it is a dark blue. And it is. So that goes here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these dark value pastels in a row. I'm going to line them up so that I can use them. So then I look and I say, okay, I need some other darks. What else would be a good dark value that would be good for dirt? So how about a dark rusty brown? That would be good. And I always like to throw in a dark violet because when in doubt, use purple. It always, it always, it's actually purple is a bridge color. Like, so it, when you're in a landscape, it ties, it ties the greens together. It just, it just is, works really well as a connector. So also violet and orange. Uh, help make green more exciting. So by picking a purple and a dark brownish orange, I'm introducing um, all the colors of the spectrum into my painting in a in a kind of a subtle way. So I've got one, two, three dark values, and I look and I say, well, you know, you have an awful lot of dark green, so you better start introducing some dark green. So I've got a nice dark green there, and I usually like to take a dark warm green and a dark cool green. So this one has a little more yellow in it, it's more brownish. This one has a little more blue in it, it's a little more of a uh, gray down blue green but still a very dark value. And so that works really well to have um, a good variety of darks and that's what I'll start the painting and I also like to think of that as that's the dirt color, that's going to go underneath all the greens. Alright, so then I look and I say, okay, what kind, I'm going to, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each element in this reference photo. Can you see this when I'm pointing to it? And then I'm going to choose the pastels that I need, or that I think will work for each element. So let's move on to the sky. So I see that it's a blue sky, it's a, a cheerful, sunny day. So I'm going to start, I need a variety of blue pastels starting with a darker blue this is kind of a dark middle value blue and I'm gonna put the sky colors over on the opposite side because these are the light this is gonna be the lightest value um, but as we go closer as we go from the zenith the top of the sky to the horizon I know that the sky is going to get a little bit lighter in value so I'll pick one that's a little bit lighter I also know it's going to get a little bit warmer, so I'm going to choose more of a um, pale turquoise, so I've got a transition of blue for the sky. Um, I do know also that the sky is going to, sometimes it takes on a little bit of a warmish glow closer to the horizon. I'm going to use that one. I'll talk about that in a second. So let's put in a very pale peach that we can use near the horizon. So this is the sky. I see that there's some indications of clouds, and I might want to include the clouds. So in order for me to paint the clouds so that they look uh, beautiful and natural, I know I'm not going to just want to use white. So I'm going to take a, a gray down blue violet, because I know that works for clouds. 
Um, and I also know that if I layer that with a pale peach, it's going to work really well for a cloud. And I also know, just from experience, and a lot of times that's what it is when it, when it goes to choosing your colors. Um, if I've painted clouds a hundred times, then I know which, what colors work, right? So um, don't feel disheartened if you have no idea what you would pick for your cloud colors. What I recommend is pick what you think and try it out. If it doesn't work, then you know, hey, that doesn't work. Next time I'm not going to choose that color. Because there's no way I can teach you what colors to choose. You have your own color sense. And the more you paint, the more experience you'll have and you'll make decisions that reflect your experience. So I'm going to use these three for the gray clouds and I'll use this lighter peach value for the lighter parts of the cloud. Alright, so we've got our dirt, we've got our sky and clouds. Now let's have a look at um, what we have going on here. We've got <clears throat> one, two, looks like three layers in the in the fields right so they're going to be green but I know that I have to have different um, sticks of green from the foreground to the background otherwise it'll look flat <clears throat> but I also know that I don't want to just go ahead and start with green I want to put some other colors on top of the dirt and if I look carefully I see that there's kind of an indication of some uh, rusty colors, some peachy colors that are underneath, like maybe it's like dead grass. Um, but whatever it is, I know that if I underpaint, if I put a layer of some of those nice warm colors, it'll make the grass more interesting. So I'm going to put down a rusty color, which is a little bit lighter than the red, reddish brown I already used. How about and by the way, there's no right or wrong choice here, right? You, I, I'm basically choosing some warm colors that I know will work well underneath um, green grass. Here's a lighter version. So I have three now that would work for underneath the green grass. I think that's good. So now, that's over here. I'm going to... Um, Let's start with the mountain in the background and we'll work our way towards the greens and the grasses. <clears throat> so we have this mountain shape that has some snow cover on it and it is a dark value but I have to be careful that I don't make this mountain shape darker than the dark in the foreground. And if I, in the photograph they're actually about the same value. But this is the case of where we have to paint what we know and not necessarily what we see in a photo because photos don't always give us accurate information. So I know that I need to pick some some darker values but also some cooler values. What would work for a distant uh, mountain shape? And I think that I'm going to use some... Let's start off with some other um, gray down violets. So this is going to be the mountain shape. So I have one, two, that's a gray, that's more of a, like a gray violet, um, mauve color, and that's probably good to start off with. What's this one? Okay, so I picked up this one. It's a, it's, it's a little bit of a brighter purple, and you know, maybe it'll work, maybe not, but for some reason, I was drawn to it. <clears throat> I'm going to add it in there. That's how sometimes you introduce interesting colors to your painting. And you're, you're, you're led to pick something up and you don't exactly know why. Go with that. Just go with that and see where it takes you. You can always cover it up if it doesn't work. So here's kind of the base mountain color. But then I want to add some kind of blue-greens to it to help push it back. So I'm, I'm going to move over to my green section. Alright, so I've got a nice blue-green right there. What is this? This is totally in the wrong uh, section. It's another mauve color. That's actually a good distant mountain color. 
Uh, so let's see, some blue greens. Um, here's one. Some, sometimes I know exactly right away what I'm going for. Sometimes I just want to kind of peruse through these and, and it'll just kind of jump out and say, hey, this might work. Um, why don't you give it a try? Here's a kind of uh, grayed down, darkish blue that will work. So, no, scoot these back. I'm going to use these colors for the base of this distant mountain. Well, when we look at it, we see little patches of snow, right? What's that? Put this right here? Yeah. Well, then you can't see. Yeah. yeah. Like this? Is this good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, patches of snow. All right, so what are we going to use for patches of snow? We know it's in the distance, so we can't use... Uh, a bright white, right? Because if we did, it's going to jump forward. So what I want to use instead are kind of dull, rosy, pinkish gray. Um, and there's also it, uh, snow in the shadows, which definitely look blue, right? So what I want to do is get some blue. Here's a really beautiful light blue violet. And then there seems to be just a regular pale blue. What's this? This will be good. Now there are some sunlit portions, right? Um, and typically I want to keep them in the dull. You know, I don't want them to be too bright. But I think I could get away with using this color, this uh, pale peach that is going to be up in the sky, for some of these sunlit patches of snow. And we'll do, you know, that's what I think will work. And by the way, I am going to paint this. It's not going to be a demo, um, but I'll, I'll share um, the results. But this, this video is about how I select the colors. All right, so now we've got our mountain. Let's, let's review. We've got our dirt. We've got our sky and clouds. We've got color under the grass. We have the distant mountain distant snow on the mountain. So what do we have left? We have the green grass. So we know that the greens in the distance need to be a little bit lighter and cooler and duller than the greens that are going to be in the foreground. So I'm going to start with a lighter, duller, cooler green. And how do we know if it's lighter, lighter, cooler, duller, uh, it's colors. It's relative, right? It's what it's what we put it next. What we put next to it, right? So that these are grayed down, kind of neutral light greens. Uh, how do I know that? Well, I could put a green that is obviously got more yellow in it, like this, right? And you can see that this is definitely warmer, closer to the sun, and these all are, are, are cooler. But it really depends on what is next to it. Because if I were to take a, um, let's take a, here we go, let's take a blue, a blue, a blue green, right, and put it next to that. That's got more blue in it. It's definitely cooler. So these look a little bit warmer, actually. So it's all relative. Um, color temperature is just one of those things that we spend so much time agonizing over. And it really depends on what you're already using in the painting and what you put that color next to. So this is too warm, so it's going to go on this end. So what I like to do is I like to uh, go from these lighter, cooler, duller, and then introduce the what I call the mid-range typical grass greens right in the middle and then um, I already have some dark green and then some warmer more yellowy greens over on this end of the tray so that's got a little more yellow in it it's a little bit darker and that's about the same so we don't need we don't need to repeat and here's one that has more yellow and it's a little bit lighter that might be too light I'm gonna take that one out here's another really nice grass green put that right there um, we want like 
nice warm sun sunlight on our green grass so we really want to introduce these really bright yellow greens but we don't want them everywhere if they're everywhere then it loses they lose their impact um, so we want to use them for our accent marks here's another mid-range green um, I like this one obviously I like this one because look how tiny it is this is just a really nice well, it's pretty similar to that one. Oh, here, this is the one I'm looking for. This has got a lot of yellow in it. In fact, it looks more gold than green, but it works really well in the grasses. All right, so I think we're good. We've got a good range of greens, distant green to foreground greens to sunlit greens. Uh, what is left? There's some patches of snow on the grass. Maybe I'll put them, maybe not, because it might end up looking too spotty. But then we also have our sheep. Now, it would be ideal if we could use some of these pastels that I already selected for the sheep. Why? Because that will give greater color harmony and cohesiveness to the painting. We don't really need to choose, you know, more extra pastels when the colors that we already have, I think, will work perfectly for the sheep. Uh, only thing that we need is we need that super dark, right? I talk about that a lot, I use it a lot, the Terry Ludwig Eggplant V100. It's dark, like black, but it's purple, so it has a little more life to it. And I always put it here up at the top because I use it for accents in small areas. So probably the uh, around the sheep and maybe a little bit in the foreground. Um, and I might actually need something that's a little bit lighter for the highlights on the sheep and some of the snow. So I'll add a pale yellow that's almost white, not quite white. All right, so that is it. That's what I do. Now, one thing I want to say about this process, it takes me, I don't know, but usually it takes me 10 minutes or so. And what I like to do is use this same palette for more than one painting. Because after all, I took the time to do this. Um, so why not paint this painting, but then find another reference photo that might fit this palette? Or find something else that's interesting and say, hey, why not make this palette work uh, for this particular reference? So I don't waste my time doing it just once and then I have to put them all away. I will actually use a palette for several paintings and that really ma it makes it... Uh, makes it feel like I'm not really wasting my time and I'm not wasting my time because I've actually painted the painting in my head as I selected the pastels and just by doing that when I get up to the painting now I have that much more information in my brain that helps it actually be a, a smoother more enjoyable process so I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, peek at how I select pastels for painting. Um, I hope that you found it helpful and let me know if you've got any questions ask in the comments and I will see you next time.